back in the boat up here in O'Connell. And I'll tell you what, a little bit of ice out there, but nothing to worry about. We'll be fine. We'll be fishing. A little bit of wind coming. We've got some sun coming. Another hour. Game on. Up on the Bay of Green Bay with my good friend Lightning Lance, the one and only. And I'll tell you what, we spent the last four hours breaking ice. And every time we'd get it broke, the wind would blow it and close it back in. Here's a big walleye right there. That's a nice fish right there. Oh, that's a nice one right there. Look at him down there. Oh, yeah. That's a thumper. I love this time of year because you don't know. Oh, there he is. That's a nice female right there. Look at that fish. Woo, I'm loving this time of year. Woo, woo, woo. Voila! Hang, hold that one up, Lance. Your fish, you want it, Larry. Hey, buddy, I'll tell you what, you definitely, uh, hey, you actually deserve this, this fish yourself <laughs> because you're the one that's you actually been fish. breaking ice for the last four hours. Finally, we found an area that is clear. You know, that's the only problem about this time of year, but typically this time of year, we're still in the airboats fishing out here in the ice. But this year, obviously a totally different spring, or, or I don't even know, is it spring or is it still winter? That one on, yeah. Scott. Scotty, on the board there. Awesome, nice. man. No, <laughs> yeah, Scott. Nice job. Yeah, hey, right. I'll tell you what, it's kind of nice to be out here early this year. Not many guys out, of course, you know, like I said earlier, we spent about almost three to four hours breaking ice, all shell ice, and uh, every time we'd get something open up, there'd be just enough wind where it close it back up. So we moved way south and definitely found a bunch of fish. Lance is marking on the side imaging. We're looking at about 12 o'clock right now, and typically this time of year when that sun is out, the afternoons are typically a lot better because it gets been getting so cold at night. When it comes to fishing rods, there's a rod that's designed for each bait and even for the day. Like, you know, a lot of times when you got really heavy wind, I don't like to use a super long rod. I typically will stick to a rod that's right around that six foot. And if it's not real windy and I want to get more distance out of my bait, then I'll go with like a seven, seven, two, seven, six sometimes, you know? But when you're pulling hair jigs like this, I like a rod that's a little bit more stout. Uh, I don't want it to, when I'm pulling it back like that, I want it to be tight all the time because I'm gliding it. I'm lifting a little bit and I'm gliding it about 10 to 12 inches, it stops. I continue to do that same method back and forth. And these, most of these fish are not really like hitting it. All you do is feel that, just that little bit of weight right there. So again, I think you gotta really match the rod to what lure you're using and how the, what kind of mood the fish are in. Obviously, you know, we had ice this morning all over the place. Our water temperature is from 32 to 30, 33 degrees. These fish are extremely lethargic. So the slower that you can move that bait, especially earlier in the day, the more successful you're gonna be. Here we go, folks, number two for me. I'm loving this, I'll tell you what. Here, it's, it's a decent fish, Lance. Whoa. I tried bumping them off. Oh, you're gonna be like that now. <laughs> oh, I Whatever see what I'm dealing with have. today, boys. You know, it's so crucial when you're using these hair jigs to be using them stinger hooks. 50%, if not more, fish come off of the stinger hook, you know, in no bait. Decent fish right there, I'm gonna let her let him or her go. Later in the day, as it, the later it gets, the more active the fish are gonna get, and so the more aggressive my cadence will change. But it's not gonna be anything like when the water temperature is around 40 degrees, where I start snapping that hair jig and really being a lot more aggressive with it. I'm gonna let this one go here. Of course, I gotta catch the one that looks like it just came out of the pier. <laughs> Got a little growth on it, huh? Not one, but two. Oh, two girls. What if, if I was in a oh. tournament, I would take these nice little warts, huh? You're right, because there's yeah. some more weight. Leave it to me. It I'll be this one in the lake. Hey, Lance, it puts it beats putting lead in them. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> there we go, another fish. I'll tell you, this is our fifth walleye in the boat on this pass. So these are definitely looking up. 
you know, again, like I was saying, we spent such a, a mo four hours almost just trying to get some decent spots to fish because it got so cold last night. A warm winter and uh, in the boats we are. And boy, I'll tell you, it's not, uh, it's basically the first week of March and uh, <laughs> We're in the boat on the Bay of Green Bay off O'Connell fishing. The best way to do it if you're a newcomer to the run of the side imaging is find soft bottom, sand bottom, mud bottom. First time I bought the hummingbird and I went out on the rocks right away, it was very difficult to see the fish. So if you're a newcomer to the units here running on sand or mud bottom, you're gonna pick out the fish much easier and that'll help you out when you do get to the rock structure. Up on the bay up here right now, most of your walleyes are going to be tight, tight to the sand bottom. They're down there regrouping, getting the warmth of that sand. And when I look for walleyes, what I'm looking for is basically blades of rice. Is what they kind of look like. A little arc to them, yellow. You know, if you're going over perch, they're going to be more like pinheads. But your walleyes, I always compare to a blade of rice. The wind kicked up here and we're finessing these jigs so much that we really had to slow it down. Normally with this wind, if the fish were aggressive, ripping wraps, plastics, we'd be all right with this. But uh, how slow that we are actually fishing the hair jigs. The slower we're moving, the better. We're not covering a lot of ground when it's flat calm. Now we got a wind pushing us. Just dial it down. The water temperature is only 32, 33 degrees. Everything is very slow this time of year. Lance, doesn't feel like a, it's not a 10 pounder like we're looking for, but it's a good fish, right? Now, kind of interesting, you know, we're over the same pass we went over just, uh, you know, last time. And this is our first fish for this pass, and you're not marking as many. Why do you think that is, Lance? You no, know, we've, we've noticed that all year. These fish are constantly on the move. They're not holding tight to one area. Okay. You know, when, typically we're used to have all the water temperature fine in the warm water. The fish are holding in that area. Yeah. The fish are on the move. All the water is consistent. It's 32 and a half, 33 degrees. We've got no warm pockets, so they're always moving. And that's the key of using your electronics out here right now, too. You know, that's definitely a big factor. We don't stop and start fishing until we mark fish. And there's times where we actually go, when we go to the set back up and do another pass, where we'll actually shut the electronics off. But when they're, so, when they're moving all the time like that, you know, this time, it doesn't really matter if you're going to turn them on or off. Um, just again, you're lining up on these passes after you mark them and then coming back down on them. So I'm gonna let this guy go on this side of the boat this time. The sun is back out. I'll take sun any day of the week when it comes to spring fishing or fall fishing. I love the sun because it warms that water up, warms me up, and just activates everything. We got one in the past before that, we had six, you know. Again, just using them electronics to try to find where them fish are at is absolutely huge. They're getting a little bit more aggressive. That yep, that one bitter and not just the stinger hook on there right there. A little bit nicer fish too. You know the cool part about this time of year when you're catching these fish is that obviously everybody comes out here. So we're the same. People hire us for the same thing. They're looking for that giant walleye. You know, if you're gonna catch that magical 30 incher a 10 pound plus fish, it's definitely gonna be this time of year. And I always say from whenever you can get out here, it opens up until about April 20th. That's your best chance to try to catch a giant walleye. Even did a little happy dance. A little happy, I like it when they dance. Oh, that is so cool. On the old stingeroni. That's the hardest part is to have the patience to be able to move that bait so slow across that bottom. Not a giant yet, but a great fish. He kicked that thing like three times before he actually got the hook. And uh, now I got him good. So you always keep it moving all the time. Never stall it. Never give up, No, nope, never give up. Again, they're getting just a smudge more aggressive. Now look at that one. Where do we got, where do we got him hooked? Pinned, oh, a little he, closer to the mouth. Yeah, he pinned it, pinned it on the bottom. When they come up to the bait, what they do is the, you're jigging the bait like this, instead of opening their mouth up, and I don't know why they do it, but they just knock it. They come up fast and just knock it right down and they pin it to the bottom. And then what they do is they back up and then what they'll do is then they'll suck it in. Using a stinger hook on your hair jigs is definitely a key thing. And for me, I prefer a stinger hook that 
you can put on and it's not tied onto the hook itself and it's not tied up on onto the head or onto the shank of the hook. I love a stinger hook that just comes with these little rubber pieces on the end right here where you can just basically slide it on and it keeps that stinger hook from coming up and down all the time. So that's a, another really good thing. But definitely when you're fishing this time of year and you're using hair jigs or even sometimes using plastics, that stinger hook catches probably a good 60% of these fish. Wow, this is one of them days too. Wait all year for this bite up here? Yep. Well, we're so early, you know. Yeah. I mean, it's gonna, the bite will last. It'll be the same time frame. We're, we're, we're just, look at the size of that one. We're just fortunate enough to be able to get up here because there's no ice out here. Well, there was plenty of ice this morning. Ooh, this is a good fighter. I love the way these fish fight. Gosh, they tussle. Ooh, that is a big girl. Not as long as the last fish, but still a real, real, that still females. You know, on this pass now, that's three females that we got into the boat and had Quite a few come unbuttoned on us. Again, you're looking at this fish. Now this fish is only probably about 22 inches long, maybe 21, 22, but look at the belly on that fish right there. Let's make it, we were just gonna go back up and make another pass, but uh, let's go just a smudge farther. Here we go. You said that Lance, 35 feet out. Oh, I'm telling you, you guys, the Google Eye hair jig is definitely becoming my favorite jig. I'll tell you that. Unbelievable. I'm so happy to be back with Acme Tackle. Boy, boy, that's a big fish. That's a good one. Oh, my. I'm, oh, come right off. That is the Google Eye hair jig. This is one of my first times. I just got my shipment in from the guys over at Acme here. And I'll tell you what, I caught that giant perch just a little while ago. And now look at this walleye. And I'll tell you something, so far I'm extremely impressed with the new lineup of products that they have. That is an absolute tank right there. It's, it's almost like the days when you had a Harley and you were waving to the guy on a bike. You see another warrior on the water, you just get a good feel. First class all the way from the people that ride them to the people that make them. They do such a nice job with communication. They'll pick up the phone anytime. It's, it's really almost a friendship. You could be in any state and when somebody with a warrior drives by you, you get that honk, that beep. You're truly part of a family and there's nothing like it. Introducing Forever Barnwood. Transform your space with the warmth and character of a genuine Barnwood look. Forever Barnwood offers over 200 authentic Barnwood products. We are commercial and food safe. Our products are available in unlimited quantities while still providing the consistency you need to complete large projects. All of this while still looking like it came out of a hundred year old barn. Forever Barnwood, bring the history inside.